1966 Mercury Park Lane. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello, Model Kit fans. Today I need to ask if you're crazy about a Mercury because today we are going down to our Model Kit Mercury showroom to take a look at what's in the box of AMT Ertl's 1966 Mercury Park Lane. So if you love these videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time we visit the showroom, you are first on our guest list. And now let's get this video up to 100 likes. And without further ado, let's open the lid on our Mercury Park Lane and see what's in the box. A full redesign for a Banner Detroit year helped lift Big Merc sales to their highest level in eight seasons. The all-new 1965 touted styling and engineering in the Lincoln Continental tradition to firmly link the two brands of Lincoln Mercury division. For 1966, the styling continued with this great 1966 Mercury Park Lane hardtop coupe. Now, I couldn't find too much information on this kit from earlier releases. I only really found two pictures on the internet. One of them from 1966 with the original box art, and another one from some later unspecified year with a full artwork backdrop. This version of the kit comes from AMT RC2 in 2005 with their checkerboard type series. And as typical RC2 on the sides, you get, of course, just simple pictures of the built-up model. They are quite nice pictures, but kind of simplistic. Of course, this side of the box shows Mercury as on the front side. And over here, we really get the same as the other side of the box. So, let's just turn this around. Now, actually, not only did I not find very much detail on earlier releases of this kit, but I also didn't find very much details of the car itself. I have a few things saying the types of engines that it had in it. So let's just open up the box and take a look. So here we go with a reprint of the original instruction sheets from 1966, which we'll just take a look at in a minute. Here we have our decal sheet, which I'll keep covered until the end of this video, just so you guys have a bit of a surprise there. We get our Mercury Park Lane body, which is very nice. Although there is a little bit of an issue with mine right here in the bottom, as you can see. It's not quite a straight line there, it is a little bit warped because of these gigantic pegs in here from when the body was on the parts tree. But we'll get into more discussion of that in a minute. So here we have our interior, which is a tub again, typical of the 60s era of model cars. We've got some nice features in here. Well, the other thing I found was this car was, the custom bits in this car were designed by George Barris, or at least it's been accredited to him. But again, I couldn't find too much information. Could also be part of the Alexander Brothers. So here's our bag with our tires in it. And then we get our sprue with the engine. And then our hood and uh, custom, uh, stock hood and some seat backs. There are quite a lot of custom options in this thing, of course. We get a hood with a opened hood area for the engine to pop through. Then we've got our chassis, which again is peg and post style. So you could turn this into a slot car or mount a slot car chassis onto this, I should say. And then we've got our dashboard and some wheels, parts of wheels, rings, nice bucket seat there, as well as a bunch of custom parts. So there's that piece that goes into the hood. And then, of course, we got the chrome, and it looks like two choices of steering wheel, again, stuck in a bag, which is typical for RC2. So, without further ado, let's put these back in the box and check out our instructions. And here we have a reprint of our instruction sheet for the 66 Mercury Park Lane hardtop from 1966. This is a reprint under the RC2 label. And of course they added this part in. 
But take a look at the sketch of this car. This is done in the same way as Ford would have drawn this for its promotional advertisements back in 1966, when they were not taking photographs of cars, but actually using the sketches, which is quite a nice, nice touch for AMT. So these are the long instructions that fold out, of course, in the long way. So as we crack this open, we get into panel number one, which shows our Mercury 427 cubic inch Super Marauder V8. And if you actually look at this thing, it looks very much like a Thunderbird big block. You've got the, the elongated chrome air cleaner with that nice stripe up the middle there, with our two big four barrel carburetors, <laughs> our intake manifold, the distributor in the front, the radiator hose coming up here, your oil filter, your front cover, your alternator, your pulleys, your fan. The oil pan is in two pieces to allow that metal axle to go through. Then look at these exhaust headers. They almost look like drag racing kind of headers. You've got your cylinder heads and then the valve covers which say Mercury, of course, instead of Thunderbird. Now I'm not saying that the engines were the same. I don't quite have that information, but it looks pretty much like the big Thunderbird big block. So just saying, just putting that out there. <laughs> you guys in the know if your Fords and Mercury's would be able to tell me otherwise. Please leave some comments in below. Let me know if there was quite a difference in the engine itself. So anyway, here we get our chassis, which again, as you saw in the unboxing, was just a single one pan. We have the blocks in here for our suspension. So there's a hole in the bottom, a hole in the top. The hole in the top is to lower your car down. Hole in the bottom is for the stock ride height. You get two exhaust extension tubes from the chassis pipe to your exhaust manifold. And then we have four or three different sets of wheels, stock custom in the street machine. So for the stock, you get, of course, the stock hubcap, Firestone tire in there, and your rear wheels. For custom, you get four Hurst forged aluminum wheels, four tires, and four inner rings. And then on the street machine, you get your Goodyear drag slicks, the big drag uh, rear ring insert, which goes into your four Hurst forged aluminum wheels, and then the front fire stones and the inner ring. And then we get into our interior. And this, of course, is a big muscle car interior. So you get a nice bucket in here, which is very similar to the 66 Ford Galaxy I reviewed a while ago. You get the rear bucket or rear bench seat that fits into the back here. Two nice front buckets, a steering wheel, the instrument panel, tachometer, and the gears shift lever. And the tachometer, it says here, is for the street machine only. And then on this side, you get the custom with this wrist twist steering column and yoke. And then you get these sort of like brass knuckle style wrist twist wheels that go onto the steering wheel. So then when you move your hand, it rotates around here and turns the wheel. Now what I did find in my research was that Ford was actually gonna try to use this in their cars, but there was regulations with steering wheels that came out at the time and this did not pass those regulations. So here we have our stock instrument panel. Now there's this, these nice custom bucket seats with headrests that glue in and a custom rear seat back panel. And that's sort of making it more like a two-seater sports car. Then you've got your gear shift lever and your tachometer, which goes on top of the console underneath the dashboard. And then into panel four, we get the body subassembly. Getting a bit of a spring with my instructions here. So there's the body, the one-piece glass, rear view mirror up in the top, the assembled interior bucket, your firewall, and your radiator, your radiator wall. It says hold into position with a rubber band around the front fenders. I, I don't like to recommend rubber bands holding things together because, well, the glue would be on the inside in here, but ordinarily I've had uh, liquid glue run up rubber bands and just leave gluey rubber band half melted plastic marks everywhere, which is never fun. Okay, so here it shows the final assemblies for stock and street machines. So stock, you get these red taillights and you pop them into your rear bumper. Then you push the whole thing onto the back and there's a little ring in here. 
so there's got to be a pin on the chrome. We'll, we'll look for that when we look at the parts. And then we just move this up a bit. And here's our custom hood going in there for the street machine. It's got this nice insert, pops in the hole. There's our stock hood, the stock bumper and or grill, which is chrome, will just pop into there. And then there's these big chassis pins that pop up into the back. You could also substitute these for screws if you're going to be building a like a slot car or just want to take it apart later on. And now we get into the cool custom bits. And from my research, I can't really tell if this was done by George Barris or uh, the Alexander Brothers, but both of those guys worked for AMT at the time. So it could be anybody. Maybe some of you uh, modelers that have earlier editions can tell me who did what. It always seems to be kind of hard to trace down. But anyway, um, there's a custom rear window that pops in here. There's a little bit of a mesh underneath. It's kind of cool. You get a choice of custom fender caps or custom tail lights to put up in here. And then there's this custom deck cap. Oh, that's up there. Um, two spacers to drop the rear bumper down a little bit. And then uh, you get these different things. Oh, this, okay, I see what they're saying. This piece here covers over top of the back trunk panel up top, and then the bumper comes in. Okay, so then they're using your stock hood, or you could use the custom hood, and there's an insert B and an insert A. The insert A is chrome, so we'll, we'll have a look at all this in a minute. Then, of course, the pegs going up. There's these custom bumperettes that go on there. This nice elongated front grille and a custom front roll pan. And you can have your two sight IBI lights in here, or SIBI. And that is our conclusion of the instruction sheet. Here, I'll just show this image a little bit. Okay, there you go. So that completes our look at the instructions. And now let's go and see the actual plastic components. And here we have our big Mercury Park Lane body. And as you can tell, this is quite a long kit. <laughs> very big, massive machine, especially for just being a two-door. There is some very nice body detail on here. I'll just bring this up to the camera. You can see these nice turn signal-like grills that they have on here, as well as the nice chrome trim going along the side. Door handles, of course. And then here we've got our script for the Mercury. Excellent work on this. They give you a little piece you got to remove here. That's just to support the roof from the mold so it doesn't get crunched when they pull it out. And then across the back panel, you can see the pegs through the trunk lid. You can see the nice Mercury emblem on there as well as the center one there. And of course we got the other side of the car. Actually, it looks like the turn signal lights are here around the fender edge. This is just a grill, so I made a little mistake there hope you'll forgive me. <laughs> okay, uh, as you can see here, or maybe not see, there is a little bit of a, an arc up here and especially back here. That's because on this side, it, this is where the body was molded and there would have been like a, a piece coming out here from the parts tree and it got cut off at the factory and that whoever cut it that day <laughs> was not being too accurate. So that's sort of the sad part about my body on this thing, but still pretty nice. It doesn't look like there's much to clean up here with the number 16 hobby blade. There's no mold marks underneath this at all. This section here across the hood has remove molded in big letters. It's almost kind of like uh, the big letters on the old Chryslers or something. <laughs> that's kind of neat. But anyway, you can cut that out and, and frame it in your picture frame. But there's the body. So let's take a look at the other parts. And here we have the chassis for the Mercury Marauder. And as you can see, everything is molded as one big piece under here. And in here, you can actually see two sink marks that would have been the uh, mounting points for the promotional model or a slot car model. So again, something cool. <laughs> So here we have the trunk, and this is where the gas tank would be. There's our rear axle, and of course our giant exhaust pipes and mufflers. And the front suspension here, 
And again, there's the blocks with the holes for raising and lowering the kit, which is pretty typical for the 1960s as model kits go. On this side, we've got our fender aprons. There isn't much detail, in fact, nothing at all, like some of the other kits where they have the wires and whatnot molded in there. These are smooth. So again, if you know your park lane and know where all the, the wires and whatnot go, you can put them underneath. But looking again, you can see the detail is quite crisp, even though this is just a one-shot you know, kind of thing. You will have to clean up along here. There's seam lines. That again is your number 16 hobby blade. But overall, if you want something quite simple, this chassis is it. So normally I don't show you guys two parts trees together here, separately, but I wanted to show you the hoods on this in how they fit in relation to the actual Mercury body. So, let's see. <laughs> okay. Well, it's kind of hard to tell with the pieces, but it looks like, from the edge, that the fit and finish is quite nice on the actual... Yeah, let's try it this way. There we go. The fit and finish looks quite accurate on the Mercury stock hood. And here is the custom hood. And again, looks like it will fit in there with tight tolerances. So that's always pretty good. Now let's just move these back since we're reviewing the parts themselves. Okay, so here we have our custom hood and the custom bucket seats. As you can tell, these have a nice deep um, straight line rib pattern in them, however you want to put that. There is some nice detail here with the vents and of course this big hood bulge and these little pieces. Not quite sure what they are. Um, anyway, there's the stock hood. These two big uh, retainer clips and our wheels and this is the panel that goes in the interior to blank it out. Sort of like the 66 Th or 62 Thunderbird kit had this in there. Um, there's the front bucket seat for a stock version. Now let's just move this a little bit. I'll bring it up to the camera so you can see the detail here. You can see the fine crisp grill along the back. And then there's those pleats in the bucket seats. And we're turning it over. We've got our heat mat molded in between the ribs. There are some of those sink holes in there. So again, your number 16 hobby blade, a little bit of filler too, wouldn't hurt. So there's those components. And then when we look at the stock version, of course, turning it over, there's that mat again. Now you can see that the actual pattern, oops, there we go, is the same underneath. So it's basically they did take the stock hood, more or less, and cut a hole through it. <laughs> there's your sink marks again in there and then the wheel backs of course we got some flash got to clean it up but there is the front bucket seat the nice nice pattern in there so those are two components for seats and hood and here is the rear window with that little panel in the back and again I'm just dropping it here to show you the difference in the size of the rear window. So as you can see this is quite a large window opening here but then the custom one will narrow it down quite a bit and how this fits onto the back of the body it's actually a nice cutout because they've incorporated the trunk line across the back where this little grill is. So it can be quite cool. It'd be nice to clip that out and see. It's just too bad I didn't buy two of these. I could build one stock and one custom. And then there's that panel that will go across the back. And it's got a little asymmetrical uh, emblem stuck in here, which is quite neat. So that's how our rear window will be for the custom version. So here's another pair of parts. We've got the interior tub going on here with the two rings for the back for those posts. Then we have our rear bench seat, the rear roll pan, the firewall, the radiator support, the nice insert for the hood, and our headrest, and the two pegs that will hold the car together at the rear. Now, it's interesting that there's only one headrest for the driver, and there isn't one for the passenger, at least it, I haven't found it yet. 
So let's just move this out of the way for a sec, take a look at this interior tub. And as you can see, it's quite a cool tub. There are some rectangles stuck on the floor here for our bucket seats to fit in. And of course, a couple of little marks here for the bench seat at the rear. You can see the detail on the so on the door panels is kind of soft, much like the 68 or 66 Galaxy was, which is unfortunate. Um, you've got the two pedals for the automatic, the uh, brake and or sorry the the gas pedal and the brake, and then your center console here. And again, soft detail. There is a mold mark up in the front that you'll have to take care of with your number 16 hobby blade. But just looking at the interior tub here, you have two options for the back. One is to put in the bench seat, which should drop into the back there. And the other is, of course, the custom component, which should drop in from the top, much like that. Very much like the Thunderbird, and leaves you with blanked out uh, rear area here. Um, very cool. <laughs> okay, so then that completes our look at the interior tub. Now let's go take a look at this part tree here. Yeah, let's just put it like that and zoom in. There, now you can see the excellent detail that they put into this kit. I mean, look at that nice upholstery pattern. Very, very much like the real 66 Mercury. A uh, real rear pan, rolled pan is a little bit, well, smooth. <laughs> okay, and then there's the firewall, and as you can see, there is an attempt at some detail. You've got your master cylinder sitting here, a bunch of little lines there, and then we've got blower motor parts and all that. The radiator supporting wall, and then the nice deep lines on this. Uh, turning it over, not much detail on this side. A uh, couple of mold buttons to take care of, but basically quite a nice, nice parts tree with lots of nice components. Carrying on with interior parts, we have our dashboard here, as well as the exhaust pipe hookups and our wheel rings. Now let's just take a look at the dashboard closer up. Close up, closer up. <laughs> okay, we have the nice instrument clusters here, and of course our glove box, and a little ring for the steering wheel to fit into. So again, nice crisp detail. I, I like the dashboards and that that they had in the cars in the 60s. Next up, we have our two steering wheels. Now one of these is a stock Mercury steering wheel, and as you can see, it's just two bars and the horn in the center. And the second one is our racing steering wheel, which is quite a flat one with the spokes sticking straight out, and uh, they are pretty cool. Last but not least, we have our gray parts tree sitting here with our 427 cubic inch Super Marauder V8. And as you can see, there is quite a big hole in here for the front metal axle to go through. It's an elongated hole for those two different ride heights, of course. Here's our wrist twist steering column and the wrist twist wrist supports. <laughs> okay, Woo, try saying that a hundred times fast. Now let's take a look at this engine block. As you can see, it is quite nicely detailed for what it is. There's our front engine cover and our oil pan. A little bit of a hole right here. That would, of course, just be a sink mark. It needs to be filled with some putty. Sand it out to perfection. There's our fan and our pulleys, the battery, the wheel rings. And if you turn it over here, you got one wheel back. There's the grips for the wrist twist, the steering wheel itself, and our intake or sorry, our cylinder heads. You can see the spark plugs in between the actual exhaust pipes, which would be quite hot if you're trying to take out a spark plug with the engine going. And then here's our intake manifold with the, the dual intake manifold. So again, quite a lot of nice detail on this. 
So let's take a look at some of the other bits. And now we have my favorite part of all model kits ever. And that of course is the chrome parts tree. And as you see here we have both the stock and the custom grill. This is almost like a Chrysler Imperial. It's big elongated, pretty cool. There we have our wheels. These are of course the stock hubcaps. And here we have actual wire wheels. These are really nice. I like those. And our rear bumper. It's almost sort of like a Cadillac style in a way. And of course our custom bumper with some nice detail here. There's our four chrome carburetors. And then here we have this nice, uh, this is for the hood. And I guess the, the carburetors breathe right through those holes. <laughs> Be nice. And then uh, there's the Thunderbird style air cleaner. Oh, of course it's Mercury Marauder. There's our valve covers with Mercury written on them. Very nice. And of course all the other little details like mirrors and uh, all that cool stuff, gear shift levers and whatnot. And here's our, our uh, headlight, tail lights going on there for the custom. So let's bring this up. Actually, let's turn that over. Yeah. So let's bring this up into the camera. And again, there's the front grill. Could use a little bit of a black wash in there. And the headlights. Now you can use a little bit of blue in there. Blue paint, transparent. Wat watered down quite a lot. Uh, there's our wheels. You can see the nice detail on there. And of course the rear bumper. It does have a couple little holes in there to help with the tail lights. But look at all this kind of cool stuff here. Like that insert. Nice and chrome. Why would you use the other one, right? <laughs> and then the mercury valve covers. I don't know, maybe you like the other one better. Maybe you don't like holes going through your hood. Because when it rains, of course, that's right in those carburetors, eh? <laughs> anyway, there's our wheels. These could be used in anything. They are really nice. Kind of neat to see those on a AMC. Like a Hornet or something. I don't know. Customized Hornet. Well, look at how deep that is. <laughs> Anyway, the metal axles would go through those holes, and these, of course, go into the other wheel backs. You have to remember to scrape your chrome. You want to glue plastic to plastic so that it sticks on nice and tight, because, of course, glue will not, will not hold plated parts unless you scrape them. So there we go with the chrome. Now we have our front and rear window glass. And this is very typical of the 60s era from AMT. You got your little headlights, your CB lights in here. Uh, but again, this one-piece thing with the holes at the back, that's very common for AMT of this vintage. You can think of like the 1964 um, Chevy Impalas and all that kind of stuff. So if you want this a little more accurate, you can carefully cut around here and across there and then glue this into your car in the back in your windows. So next up we have our tires and tail lamps. and these are the taller red custom tail lamps and of course these ones are the stock ones and i just realized remember when we were looking at the hood and i was like what were these parts these are the actual body panel inserts that would go on that instead of your rear tail lights so <laughs> in the end all was revealed okay so what we have here are firestone supreme tires now these ones are more um uh proper i guess to the actual cars of this era as opposed to the other type of firestones that were in the galaxy kit from the 30s these ones have a little more detail to them along the sides and these would have the narrower white wall that you could paint in there of course the trim is still the uh, lines going all the way around so then for our custom and sort of race style car we have the Goodyear Polyglass GTs, which of course are, you know, have the big raised letters going on here. And then there is a little tread pattern in here. It's not just lines going all the way around. There is actually a little bit of wave inside the lines. And then we finally have our Goodyear Blue Streak Drag Slicks. And of course these ones are uh, nice and slicky. <laughs> Smooth, no tread at all. Um, you can spin these in your wheel spinner and just press that in, put it in your drill press, 
and then hold a file or sandpaper to that just to soften up that hard edge. And then of course we get our steel axles for our wheels. And here we have the decal sheet for the 66 Mercury hardtop. There's a whole series of different types of stripes on here. You get the big thick red one with little yellow pinstripes on the edges. This red one with yellow pinstripes through the center. This black one with red and yellow pinstripes. A white stripe in here. And then a thick black one that breaks into smaller stripes there. Now these can go on the hood, the roof, anywhere you want them to be. And you also get these two red and yellow license plates. Although I'm not really sure where they're from. I can't read if it says Ohio or something like that. So maybe some of you guys know in the description. You can leave one in the comments below is what I'm trying to say. And there we have our decal sheet. And that completes our look at the AMT 1966 Mercury Park Lane Hardtop by RC2. And I wish you a lot of success in building this. Well, I hope you enjoyed this exciting episode of Monster Hobbies. Oh, what's in the box when we got to look at the AMT 1966 Mercury Park Lane. Hopefully you can find a copy of this for yourself out there in the real world, but this one's mine, so I'm going to build it one day. Maybe I'll do a Let's Build It video of this one day. We shall see. Time will tell. See you in 2023. <laughs> Alright, anyway, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you are the first to know about it. Let's get this baby up to 100 likes, and until next time, see you in a Mercury.